Hey everybody, welcome to my satsang, satsang number three. Um, so hopefully um, you had a chance to join us the last time we had a special satsang with uh, a real life uh, teacher, Sri Brockman, and he was uh, teaching us self-inquiry. Uh, so um, if you didn't get a chance, the uh, the satsang was uploaded into YouTube, and um, you could you could watch the replay. Uh, so he's one of the realized uh, teachers I had a chance to spend time with. Um, so tonight the topic is about um, the topic is about um, ashrams, uh, visiting ashrams, getting the benefits out of the ashrams. Um, and uh, just a Q&A if anybody have questions about uh, ashrams and, uh, you know, what is an ashram? Uh, so, so it's, you know, um, an ashram, um, I'll just talk about from my experience. It's, uh, uh, I started going, started getting exposed to the idea of ashrams probably about, oh, 13 years ago. And uh, when I visited the the, the hugging Ama, so then um, uh, some years later, uh, I made made my first trip to to her ashram, um, and essentially it's a it's a it's a it's a spiritual center, spiritual community. So um, for people to do uh, uh, do uh, their their self work, um, um, so. Let me, um, you know, let me show, let me share, share my screen real quickly. I'm just going to quickly talk about the, the four paths of self, self-realization. And then, um, you know, I wanted this to be like, a, you know, if people have uh, questions about ashrams, um, hey, I, I'd love to just to share my experiences with, with you, if you, if you have anything. Um, so let me just share my screen quickly. I'll just give you a quick, you know, all my slides are very simple slides. So let me, um, let me share the screen. Okay. Right. So here's my, here's my screen. Okay. If anyone, you don't see it, let me know. So, so, Hey, why I learned about this is, um, uh, there's like they, they call it the four most, most common paths of self-realization and this is uh uh this is the first one is, is called karma yoga um karma yoga it's a path of of service you know what that means um you know when, when i go to ashrams it's it's all made of volunteers you know the, all these volunteers are just doing service for this uh, for the community they're uh, they are, um, you know, uh, you know, directly from my experience when I got the, the, this understanding. You know, the hugging ama has has a has an ashram in, in India, and she also actually has ashrams in Chicago, I think New York, Los Angeles, uh, different parts of the U.S. Um, and it's you know it's all funded by volunteers. Um, the volunteers are are. Are hosting her, um, putting on this event, so a, a self-realized master can come to um, your area, your city, to to bless you. Uh, uh, people are coming to her for whatever suffering and their sorrows, and she's trying to uh, up uplift you. Okay, so all these volunteers that are are, are working for this organization, um, they're they're just doing their uh, their service and by doing that it actually gives them I, 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 you know I can't speak for every single one of them um, but they are um, you know getting their in, in, incredible tremendous benefits from from doing volunteering work so it's called karma yoga okay they're not getting paid for it by doing it it's a it's a selfless uh, act and it seems like um, from from doing uh from doing the service, um, you know, um, it's just you know in the east they 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 talk about burning your 
your your your negativities, your your negative karmas. And <clears throat> well, I, I do have to say that when you, you know, for each and every one of us, whenever we do volunteering work, it could be on your own, you could be with a nonprofit group. All of that from the East is is considered uh, karma karma yoga. You're doing selfless. Let me just uh, selfless service. Okay, so when you're doing selfless service, you're not getting paid for it. Um, you are uh, there's a tr tremendous benefits, joy that comes out of this. Um, your negativities can shift. Uh, I, I heard uh, the Karuna Mai is another one of the uh, saints that I um, had some good fortunes to spend time with. And she was telling a story about this either millionaire or billionaire who was just suffering and had some uh, had, uh, health issues and just was miserable and unhappy. And, and he doesn't even like to give the money. But the only thing he likes to do is for some reason, I think he was like, he, he made some donations for, for some reason, I think the, the saint told him to go donate some veggies. And for, for some reason, he liked to do that. And then um, his uh, illnesses went away just from his donations or, or working to, to serve the poor. He did something like that. And then his his health improved. Okay, so um, it's, it's a way to burn your negative um, uh, karmas or your in the west they call it your conditioning so if you're if you're um, feeling down or depressed um you could do some volunteering work uh seva they call it seva um and uh and so it could be really helpful if you're stuck in a rut um <laughs> in fact I, I tell a lot of my uh our clients sometimes they they they, they want to be in a relationship they're single I actually said, had I known about this, <clears throat> not that you should go do Seva to, you know, just to um, be using it as a dating service, but I said, hey, if I had to tell my younger self um, what to do more of, and I don't know if my younger self would have had any wisdom to to listen to to, to me, uh, it would be probably to do more volunteering work, do more do more service uh, earlier in, in my in my life. But I, I probably didn't have that wisdom to, to value that. Now that um, haven't been going gone through this process, um, hey, I, I think that it could be really helpful for, you know, uh, a number of areas in life, just your own personal happiness and and, and so on. Uh, just to see other people that if you could do some service, because in Chicago that the um, the group, the AMA group that um, uh, is the Corona Mai AMA group that um that we used to go to a, a soup kitchen with and uh you know people it, it just it feels so good and then they're you know helping helping someone else uh when, when they're in, in a time of need is, is just i don't know it's just kind of um a wonderful thing to, to do for yourself and for society so um so this, well, one of the past self-realization is called um karma yoga so the the next um the next one is called bhakti. Bhakti is like devotional. So um, uh, devotional um, practices are like chanting mantras, chanting different names of God. So different traditions have different types of their chants. Um, and then, um, you know, even, you know, the Christian or Islam or Bud Buddhist faith, they all have mantra chanting. So it's, that's, that's, that's part of bhakti. And then when we had Sri Brahman on, we did yana. Yana means the path of knowledge, which is self-inquiry. Um, so you're doing self-inquiry with, um, you know, who am I? And uh, and then you can watch the other, the previous satsangs to um, get a taste of yana and self self-inquiry. And then the 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 last major path of um, self-realization is called dhyana, which is um, uh which is uh uh it's the it's the path of meditation so karuna mai's um ashram uh you know we if you go ever make it to her ashram let me show you picture i don't have a picture of her meditation i wish i i, I wish i had it but this is what her ashram looks like it's in the 
you you have to fly into Chennai, okay, and then um, it's not it's not a huge ashram. During the winter, she only holds uh, meditation retreats in November and December, and and it's like only about like I don't know a few hundred people that attend. It's not thousands of people. And in her ashram, where the mountains are, there used to be tigers. Um, you know, tigers used to roam. And when Ama was doing her spiritual practice, I, I think uh, both Ama Karunimai and the Hugging Saint, they, they, I think they're known to be born realized. And she d- did like 10 years of just meditating, um, you know, in, like by these waterfalls and the mountaintop for just endless and endless hours. And um, and w- for, I don't know, for years, uh, she did her, they call the meditating for uh, intensely doing your doing your uh, doing your tapas. Uh, so, um, and it's also known that um, um, you know, like many thousands of saints or previous to her or even now in, in, vis- in their invisible forms or it could be t- thousands or tens and thousands have meditated in these these holy areas. So when you're when you're actually there meditating, um, it's highly highly intense. For I think for the first three or four four years, or it was very painful even sitting. Uh, for me, I mean, other people's experience could be different. Just sitting, uh, it's, it's hard to to sit. But it took me some years, um, and I was then I, uh, then I was able to um, uh, meditate a lot better. Um, and just so, just so you know, the reason why there's these different paths of self realization is because. Um, um, because uh, not everybody could sit and meditate for a long time. And then before you could even do self-inquiry, if your mind is too busy, it's very, it's difficult, not easy to do self-inquiry. So that's why there's so many different paths and so many different mantras. And, you know, the, the realized, um, the realized um, saint will be able to uh, tell you what's the best path for you. Um, I think I have a question. Uh, let me see. Let me unmute you. Is it Bavashia? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi. Hey, Paul. This is my first live satsang. Thanks so much for doing this. Um, yeah. I just wanted to share something about bhakti. I mean, I mean, my understanding of bhakti. I kind of grew up in India. Is is like intense love, unconditional love yeah. for the God. Um, and so like there was this whole bhakti movement where there were a lot of people who would like write poetry and there were saints who sang about God with all this love and devotion and a lot of bhajans when you go to bhajan is like a similar concept of like you're singing in praise of the Lord and this collective energy and there's love it's just unconditional love like selfless also selfless in a way but uh, but it's easier for some people to I think have a figure to you know, express uh, devotion and focus. Um, but yeah. just felt like sharing that is. Oh, so. totally. Appreciate you chiming in and sharing that because, um, yeah, maybe a, another satsam will talk all about bhajans because that itself is a whole uh, devotional practice. It's beautiful. It's very high energy. And, you know, the, the hugging ama has um, one of her um, um, core, um, I think, uh, f- functions is every night there's budgets for like an hour and a half two hours and i just um i think it, some of some you know i just try to pull out whatever pictures i can, i have in the, at the ashram but I, there's no public not a lot of pictures on on um, google i could find uh, and we're not, i don't even know for i don't know i don't have any in my phone because i got a new phone too um but it would be nice to show uh show everybody it's just like uh, a, a bhajan is like in the West, it's you know, people that are familiar with yoga, it's like kirtan, it's like devotional singing, um, like, like, uh, like a calling or respond for uh, if you go to your local yoga centers. Um, and uh, and it's it's really by 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 repeating the names of the divine, whichever faith every, everybody's from, it really helps people connect to that. A greater spiritual energy and it's um it helps your mind calm down there's so many endless benefits okay so people are just sitting there and and saying um you know repeating these names of god and 
it's and people are playing i don't know the different instruments because i'm i don't know the instruments but um um so it's very beautiful yeah it's a huge part of the of the devotional practice so um um let me just uh check in to see the chat if anybody have uh, specific questions if you about uh uh, about ashram because today i just wanted to um share with people what um oh yeah katie said can I share the magical experience yeah i think um the magical the magic of the ashrams is that the divine if you happen to be at an ashram the divine will open up doors for you you'll have like your own i would say spiritual awakening experiences and it will also um there's just like being being at an ashram, if you could be there, you know, even a day or two or three or whatever day you can, if you could spend a week there, uh, if you could spend a month there, it's it's just incredible because um you will probably go there as a certain person, have a certain perception, and your perceptions can just very change very quickly. Uh and um how do I say it? It's just kind of like you'll have intense moments of discomfort. And, you know, you could have, um, um, how I say, it, like even situations that are people that, that, that trigger you. Like, <laughs> it's like, how, how do I say this? It's like the divine is always, so for us to become self realized, it seems like my experience is that in every moment there's a teaching experience in the, when you're doing volunteering or you're meditating or you're um whatever you're doing every moment um um is a is a is a teaching experience and then being at an ashram being in india the the ashram is an embodiment of whatever the that specific teacher is like the hugging ama has her her practices is karma yoga which is selfless service um and um um and also bhajans and she does have a i am meditation practice and um you know um and i, I guess she encouraged people to do some meditation but very devotional focus very um karma yoga um seva or volunteering focus um ashram um so something that you're very unconscious of she's going to like if you have some darkness you haven't dealt with, um, it's going to be like, it, it, it accelerates that and it burns through it. And then you'll just have like intense joy or bliss or um, whatever. Uh, or just, so I, I've heard people talk about like, they, they would ask Amma at the ashram and internally, and internally show me what the, the self or the divine is like. And they'll, they'll just have this in, intense experience of that. So whatever your wish is for the divine, um, that will probably uh, probably happen. And, uh, um, you know, like other people's experiences, I, I may have said that some people have different health issues they come to her for. And I've heard stories where people that have cancer and they, they ask for a blessing and then this person would end up living for years because doctors said this person couldn't make it, but then um um they just i don't know um um have miracles in, in lots of uh lots of areas um so those are some i, I guess some experiences just um it's just a huge accelerator if you if you're looking for um um connection to the divine or why you're suffering and it's going to help you process through things i would say that's some of my um, experiences. Um, I want to, uh, is it, so I hope that gives you a, a little bit, um, of the experience, um, um, these are, I hope that gives you a little bit of the insights, Katie. Uh, if we, if, if somebody else have a specific question, I'm happy to, um, uh, raise your just raise your hand or um right in the chat box i'm happy to answer your questions because because i've been going there for the last 10 uh last oh gosh it's 2013 so every year 
Um, and, uh, and a lot of my healing practices, uh, a lot of my healing practices have been, um, uh, have came from a lot of the self-reflection, um, sitting at ashrams, working through things and looking at how our mind works. Um, let me see. Uh, I think there was someone that, that wrote me, uh, if, if you're on, on the call, feel free to. Yeah, go ahead. Who, who, I'm sorry, who is this? Can you? Do you want to uh, unmute and you want to ask your question? I do. Yeah, go ahead. What is uh what is the ashram and where is it? Like I missed that part. Uh uh well because um you want me you wanna know what an ashram is? Is that what your question is? Yeah, well no, what like is it a place and like what is it? Like where is it somewhere? Is it here in America? Yeah, you oh. see this? This is these are pictures of Amma's ashram, the hugging saint. Uh she it's uh these are in, in, in India, in Kerala. It's right by the ocean, and um, and um, uh, you see all these tall buildings. These are all like res residence residencies, and because there's thousands of people that that live there, it's like a community. So everybody on the at the community is responsible because they're all volunteers, right? And they're responsible okay. for taking care of some some people. Some people are chopping veggies. Some people, I mean, uh, they ask you to do like an hour, ninety minutes of. Uh, volunteering work every day because everybody is contributing to uh, to a role. It's very well organized. Um, right. I think Amma's um, charities, people are raising millions of dollars. Um, uh, they're donating to the poor and just doing a ton of... Oh, there's even a university at Amma's ashram, Amrita Puri. So, um, like, full-blown... So it's in India? Yeah, that's in India. But she does have an ashram in... Um, she does have an ashram in... Uh, I think Los Angeles, San Francisco. I think I know she has one in Chicago. I've never been to all of that. I only been to the one in the one near San Francisco and and uh, the one in Chicago. But I haven't been to the other ashrams she has throughout the the U.S. and and Europe. Oh, I'm on my way to Chicago now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it, it, you know, if you if you feel calling to visit any of it, it's um. You could just feel that the energy is very high at the ashrams, and these volunteers are literally when she does tour, um, they're um, on her last night. They, they are working like twenty four, like like uh, all all night for her last night because she does a whole evening program. So the program doesn't even end until she's hugging people till like seven or uh, or eight o'clock in the morning. So, oh, that's the the hugging. You... Yeah. This is Amrita Puri. I mean, what do you, do you have a further question? How do you spell ashram? Uh, ashram. It's um, A S H R A M. Okay, got it. All right. Okay. Yeah, and and also just so you know that the ashram is that uh, it's not you know it's not a religious type of a place. It's just that because I in the beginning I showed that there's these four paths of self realization. You could do mm -hmm. whatever. You could pursue whatever path that's most suitable for you. What it's a, if right. whatever your internal calling is for you to become enlightened. Okay, um, so it's not like you know, like it's it's not like a it's not like a traditional church or, or anything like that. It's right. just it's just it's it's a it's a inner it's a inner experience for 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 everybody. So right. Um, let me show you. Uh, let me show you Ramana's ashram. So this is Ramana's ashram. Okay, this is Ram Ramana Maharishi. Okay, so so there are like this is the ashram. Most people just go there. This is all these pictures are as Ramana. So it's, there's a ashram around, okay. around this town called uh, um, Tiruvannamalai, and then um, okay. most people are there, just uh, sitting there meditating, doing their self inquiry. Okay. And uh, oh, um, and then um, nobody is there to tell you what to do, or it's just that it's a it's a it's an inner retreat for for yourself. 
Okay. Uh, and by sitting right. in, by sitting at these places, it's very high energy. Um, you are going to get your own internal insights that 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 come to you. Uh, okay. So I think I have another. I hope that answers your question. Uh, let me um, ask answer the next question. Uh, so is it joy? Is it joy? Do you want to uh, uh, unmute yourself and just um, uh, ask your question? I think you have you raise your hand, right? Do you want to unmute yourself? Uh, and Akatel, I think your name is AJ or Akatel Joy. Can you you raise your hand? Okay. And for some reason you can't unmute. You could just write your write it in the chat box. Okay, I'm not hearing you. Okay, so um, okay, just write it into the chat if for some reason you're you you can't. Um, you can't unmute yourself. Okay, so let me um. Is there any other any other questions about ashram? Um, otherwise, I'm gonna move on to the to the next portion of what I want to cover. I just want to, you know what, these thoughts are just for me to share my experiences with, with everybody. Um, uh, just so you know, sometimes people have, have um, very incredible uh, life-changing enlighten, enlightening experiences. And sometimes before you get to those, uh, before you get to those experiences, um, um there could be some pain you could be pr processing through some dark stuff there could be physical uh discomforts uh physical challenges uh because the being at an ashram the energy is qu sometimes can be sometimes quite quite intense but that's that's what happened uh when we experienced but everybody's experience is going to be different you will be actually letting go of uh likely of, of 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 your old patterns and um conditioning uh just because the energy is so strong and and purifying uh so i don't want to say it's not all uh like all positive joyful blissful sometimes there could be some discomforts um you know because being at the ashram it's, it's it's very purifying for the body and for the mind uh, it just burns through from the east. They say it burns to your conditioning and your and your karmas. Um, so those are the key things I want to just share for uh, introducing you to the to uh, to the to the ashrams and um, this is what I've been doing the last um, um, I don't know twelve years. So um, I don't see any other questions about ashrams um okay so the next thing i want to do is uh for everybody is that um i want to just build on how you can apply mantras because if you um um if you uh um if you've been listening to my uh other satsang calls i talked about um having a mantra a practice. Uh, so as I said earlier, uh, we, we talked about it's part of the the, the, the devotional uh, path. And generally, if you go into um, the hugging saint or Karuna Mai and uh, Sri Brahman, they 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 are self realized teachers, and they can actually give you what they call a mantra initiation. And I talked about that in the first satsang. So um, so if the if you get a mantra from them, if you chant it. It could like help you with tremendous like benefits. Okay, so so I want to talk to you about today because a lot of people came to me is because they they learned of me uh, through Chinese energetics and uh, they found me on YouTube uh, and uh, or or maybe um, speaking events um, and that's how they learned of me. So 
I wanted to just to share with people how they could do their own self work just by using the mantras. Um, and when I um, um, wh when I learned from the hugging ama, she's like saying, "Hey, if you actually chant your mantras over some years, it reduces your your negative thoughts, your your negative emotions, and uh, and especially if you have um, if you have uh, um, if you have uh, chronic issues." I wanted just to show you how, from an energetic standpoint, on how you can actually use whatever mantra you're chanting to um, let go of any type of negative emotions, negative thoughts, beliefs, um, and so on. Um, and by doing that, it's going to help you have more energy and possibly... Um, help you with your own self-healing because the body itself is a naturally healing organism but if you have negative thoughts negative beliefs um you know all these emotions and if you don't know how to process them um you know then it causes you to lose energy and and so i want to you know just point out because when i went through when i got a mantra i didn't I didn't like understand that there was all these benefits to it. And it just kind of came to me because of the healing arts I study. I'm like, wow, chanting these mantras really helped in these areas. So I thought I'd share that you can actually, if you have a mantra and on your own, you can use it to actually really improve your energy and actually improve your health as well. Um, so uh, let me go back to that that screen that I was sharing with you, uh, which, okay, so, so here, what I want, you know, everybody to do, if you have a chronic issue, um, it could be, you know, it could be chronic anything. It could be a physical issue. For some people, it's maybe chronic stress. For people, you know, some people might have <laughs> chronic depression. Whatever your chronic issue is, uh, what I want you to do is just to, um, you could just make a list of all of your negative thoughts and your, your negative emotions, your perceptions, any meaning uh, you give to your chronic, chronic, um, whatever, suffering or any history. You could just, whatever your story is, if you follow these steps of using the mantra, then it could be really helpful for you. Uh, let me see if I could... Um, find someone and do a demonstration and then you can um you can apply this uh, pr uh, pr process so um let me see let me see if i could use a all right i got uh hey okay you could go ahead you you want to ask me a question or do you want me to be do you want to be a demo subject yeah, yeah, I was thinking I'll be a demo subject. I'm a very enthusiastic student. Okay, cool. So, so let's just just um, do you have a chronic discomfort or a pain or a? Yeah, or... I have uh, asthma, anxiety. Okay, all right. So, just uh, what what's your first thought or emotion connected to this asthma or anxiety? Maybe I've analyzed anxiety more, so I can try talking about that. Yeah. So. So whatever your first thought or emotion is, if your emotion is uh, saying, saying, oh, I have no energy, maybe that's your first thought or um, or I'm unhappy, I have this or whatever it is, right? Just kind of look at your own thoughts for a second or your own emotions, okay? And hmm. whatever that's in your mind about your asthma, you know, what's your, what you don't have to, you, you, you could just, if you want to share quickly, that's fine. If you don't, that's also fine. It doesn't matter from my standpoint. I just want everybody to be aware of their thoughts and their emotions about whatever their chronic issue is, right? So, mm -hmm. so, um, so think about your first thought. Are you are you are you happy or unhappy or anything like that? I feel the... unhappy and limited by asthma. I, I wonder why I have it. Okay. Uh, and I feel embarrassment when I have to use an inhaler. Um, okay. Yeah. Good. So these are your thoughts and your emotions about it, right? 
So mm -hmm. for everybody else, you have with your own chronic issue, you have your own thoughts and emotions. So, so you could just make your own list of whatever your thoughts and emotions. So now I want you to just in silence, um, I want you just to see where, where your body, where your body feels the, uh, feels this thought of, you know, I'm embarrassed or whatever, or, or unhappy about it. Do you feel it in there, in your head, in your heart, in your gut, in your, um, you know, is there what's what's the what's the body sensation connected to having having asthma or anxiety? I think it's physically in my chest. Okay, so physically in oh. ch chest. Okay, so the next thing, what um I'm gonna sh share is that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, now I'm just gonna use the Sri Brahman video from her YouTube for Om Namah Shivaya as as a sample mantra, and just by watching this, you could use this mantra. Or any other mantra you want to use, because um, because we have uh, in my satsang one we talked about the Gayatri mantra, we talked about the Muchan Muchan Jaya mantra. If you know a Buddhist a Buddhist mantra, you could use that. If you're if anyone that's in a call is from a Islam faith, if you there's the ninety nine names of the divine or God, you could use that mantra or Christ, Christian mantra or or any other faith. You have your own mantra. Or Honoponopono is the Hawaiian mantra. You can even use that. All right. So, so you say you felt it in the chest. So I'm just gonna play it for everybody here, so that people could, if they don't know a mantra, and they and they could just uh, watch this for like I don't know for like 15 seconds, then they could use this mantra if they want to use this mantra. <laughs> Okay, so if you want a mantra just by watching his video, because it was a for, for the public. It's Om Namah Shivaya. So, um, so you can just, uh, this itself by watching him, because he did it for the public, would be like a public energy initiation. So it helps you chant the mantra. Okay, so you could watch that um, if you don't have a mantra. Um, so, uh, Bhavesha, when, uh, so just when your body is um, so holding whatever the sensation, I mean, for you and for everybody else, okay, just, Think about your negative thought or your negative uh, emotion and just notice where your body is. Some, for uh, Bhavesha, it was it's in the chest, but you might feel in your gut, you might feel in your in your in your shoulders. Okay, what I want you to do is just to connect to the divine energy and then um, um, and then have an intention just to let it go. Let go of this 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 negative thought or emotion. And then follow your breath, okay? And just do that. And then, you, you know, whatever the, the, the sensation is, chant it with the intention to kind of giving it to the divine, letting the divine take whatever negative energy um, from, from it and just offer it to the, um, to the divine. So we're just going to do that for like a minute for everybody, okay? Uh, pick whatever your negative thought, negative emotion connected to your chronic issue. And then just for the next minute, we're going to do it in uh, just in silence. And then you can notice how you feel. Okay. So just chant whatever mantra in silence. It could be Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, or it could be whatever your mantra might be.
Okay, so uh, Bavesha, how, how do you feel? Do you feel something move or change as you were chanting? How does your chest still feel? I feel a little bit of release in my chest, actually. Uh, okay. More right. like a, I feel a little energized. Okay. Um, like I can feel my palms sweating a little bit. So there's been some energy. Um, Good. Yeah. So as you're chanting, your, your sensations will change. And then um, you might have another thought about your asthma, or you might have another, uh, you know, it could be, an, it could move from the chest, it could move uh, from, from some other areas of your body, okay, or, or your thoughts might change, okay, mm -hmm. so whatever, wherever the body sensation is changing, just continue to, to chant the mantra, and kind of ob continue to observe your body, continue to chant the mantra. Okay, so just for everybody else, whatever your um, um, whatever your uh, issue is, I just pay attention to your thought, your emotion, and where your body is holding it, and then just chant your mantra with the intention to connect to the divine, letting go of these negative thoughts, emotions, um, and just you know giving it back to the giving it to the universe because. You know, as they say, energy is not never created or destroyed. It just it just goes from one form to another. So, just uh, set the intention to connect to the divine, and then uh, notice what happens. Just do another round. So this is what I do when I'm chanting. I'm just observing my my thoughts, my emotions, and as I'm chanting, different thoughts might come up, and just keep paying attention, be aware of the body, and just keep chanting. And it just it's a way to connect the divine and process through all these negativities. And when, when they, when they get processed and released, then I, then it's just like, I, I feel so much better, whatever that's been burdening you or causing you heavy, then it shifts. Okay. Um, so just do another round, another, another minute and notice how you feel um, as you chant your mantra. Okay. Um, how do you how do you feel now, Devesha? How did the how did it go as you're as you're chanting? Um, I was making some observations about my own asthma. Uh, yeah, I I feel I feel better. But I'm, um. I'm not exactly able to articulate it, but it feels like uh, I felt hope that I can release these things. Yeah, I felt hope that I am capable of releasing this. Um, okay. Makes sense. Yeah, no, that's great. That's the whole point of what I'm trying to share is that uh, is that you know if you have something chronic or long term, if you have a practice that could help you process your if we, if we have a practice and you can and we can process our negative thoughts negative beliefs whatever um then uh, your body itself has natural healing abilities and just by by using this as a practice um and it's also it's like i think what what mantras did for me is is it just taught me to learn to to sit and Instead of being reactive when we have negative thoughts, we're just observing them, observing them, observing them, and the, and then the mantras burns, uh, burns the 
burns, they say they burn all these negative thoughts. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, the point here is I was never taught like that there's this, there's a connection with our thoughts and our body sensations, but I learned it elsewhere before I got, before I learned mantras. So I just thought I put a connection for mantras and using mantras and having awareness that your thoughts are connected, your thoughts and emotions are connected to your body. So if everybody could, could develop their awareness, then over time, whatever your, your what's causing the suffering, it's our thoughts. That's why I, one of the key things I, I learned in, 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 my, in my travels to India and meditation and all these spiritual, is our, our thoughts create our suffering, our thoughts and our beliefs. And if we can process our thoughts, um, you know, they call it using a mantra to burn these thoughts. If we could mm -hmm. burn these thoughts, then uh, we're going to be a lot happier. It's our thoughts that cause the suffering. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so that's, um, and, and if you were on the call the last two times, um, you know, my wife briefly mentioned that she had um, like, you know, abuse, psychological abuse, like earlier in life and she had nightmares for like 20 some years but by chanting the Gayatri mantra for four months straight but she did it a lot intensely um for for like at least an hour and a half for four years straight uh, four months straight and her nightmares went away like 20 some years of nightmares all the not the night so Every time we, if you have an unprocessed negative experience, it's a trauma, you know, or traumas or whatever, unprocessed experience are repeated thoughts that play over, even though that experience already happened in the past, whatever that you suffered, it gets, the mind is continue, continuously repeating them. So if you have a mantra practice and it burns these thoughts, then something that you have for, for 20 years, but it's, it wasn't overnight, it took four months and she chanted it for an hour and a half or more every um every day for four months so if whatever negativities or traumas you can you can i, 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 I hope they're sharing this you can significantly inc improve the quality of your life if you stick to a practice so again i'm not here to to tell people what mantras they should be should or shouldn't be using but that's work for for us and and if you you know watch these mantras from these realized teachers, saints. Um, I, I feel like some mantras have, uh, they, they, from my learnings, they have different conscious, different abilities. But it's still, whatever mantra itself behind it is still connecting to the, to the greater source. And it's the connection to the greater source, the self, is what's burning through everything. So um, it, at the end, it seems to have a very similar benefit or, or, or impact. So, um, hey, I hope this is helpful for everybody. Does anyone have questions? Uh, yeah. Did you want to ask a question? So, so the mantra, Gerald, Gerald um, I have a question about the uh, mantra. Is that the one that we say, the one that you put on the screen? But like yeah. if you're having an issue, like my mind will be eating and overweight. And I lose it, and then I pick up, pick a drastic amount of weight up, 50, 60 pounds, and then I drop it. Is probably emotional. Can I yeah. use what do I what would I say to, to what mantra would I say to? Them? Uh, okay, let me be a bit clear from um, that. There's a difference between like Sanskrit or like a spiritual mantra versus a like a self help affirmation mantra, like I'm powerful or I'm confident or or. Those are, those are more of the more Western type of self-help approaches. But uh, a mantra is like Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, which, which I showed you. And you can get that off of the, the YouTube link. Om Namah Shivaya means in, in the East, uh, Shiva, the, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a form of Shiva, which is there's a form of a god with a, a snake wrapped around his head uh, uh, with a, uh, the wearing, sitting on, on tiger skin or something like that. That's a, a form of Shiva. But Shiva itself means the self, okay? It means self. That's my understanding, my learnings. It's saying Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. It means con connection to the self. Because there's a form of, the, the form is the the, the deity, the, 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 the God that you see uh, has a form. But there's a not, not form. The not form is the self, self-realization. So 
which the the self is in every one of us by right? and when you chant it it's it's your connection it helps you connect to the self okay so if you have weight issues as i <clears throat> um let me just share this screen once once again uh so if you have weight issues so you could just go into here to, if you want that 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 chant okay. uh, if you let me um okay so all right so if you have weight issues chronic weight uh, issues, yep take a take a take a piece of paper and write down all okay. your, all the having weight what's all your what's all your emotions connected to maybe you're upset at yourself maybe you're feeling down or maybe you're um, maybe, maybe your neck of thoughts, thoughts is like whatever, whatever they, they might be. Um, like, I, I can't do what I want. Make Just take a diary or whatever, or a piece of paper, and write down all your thoughts. Write right. down your beliefs about, about it. Write down any meaning you gave about your weight. Like, if I gain more weight, I'm going to, you know, I'm, I won't be able to do this or, or I have more pain, whatever it is. Okay, make a list of that or any history or any stories you have about your weight. Okay. Right. So just label, number your 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 thoughts, your your negative thoughts, your emotions. Maybe you wrote down ten thoughts or ten emotions or whatever. And wherever you, wherever you, uh, whatever that thought is, pay attention to how your body holds the thought. Just just in silence to say, no, I'm angry about my weight. Okay, where does my body feel it? Okay, and then. Okay. And then pay attention to where where your your body where your body holds it, and then you could um, chant the mantra to say if I have a negative thought about about this, connect to the divine energy and just start chanting with the intention. Is the key is uh -huh. the intention is to let go of this negative thought or emotion, and then breathe. Okay. okay. So then you just. I'm there. Let's get with keyboard. Yeah, okay. whatever whatever your negative thought is, uh, uh, sometimes you know you can. Okay, if you're chanting, another thing you, you that might you might experience is that you might ex you might start to feel drowsy or tired, or you might have emotions that come up. Or sometimes you can't sit still. Okay, so what I learned from okay. hug hugging my ama is that you can um, you can stand and chant the mantra if you if you need to or. You could wash your dishes and chant. Just chant all the time to with the intention. What well, I'm saying with the intention to let go of these negative thoughts and emotions. So right. Does that uh, does that help? And if you if, if you also want to feel free to uh, uh, you know feel free to um, message me directly. Does everybody have uh, uh, Does everybody have my email? You could you could email me. If you guys have okay. questions about the mantra, I mean, I didn't take a snapshot of the mantra itself. Yeah. Um, Om Shiva, right? Om Namah Shivaya. Yeah. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. You could chant at whatever song you want to chant for that. It doesn't have to be the super slow pace that the Sri Brahman chants it, but whatever pace you want to chant it is fine. <clears throat> um, but the idea is that you're connecting to it. You're connecting to this greater energy to, to help you process what, whatever your negativity is. The, the Do we get a copy of this? Of this uh, yes, recording yeah. so I can see what it says? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, are you on my email? Is everybody here on my email? If, if you're not on my email, be sure to uh, put, the, put your email contact uh, and then I will send it out to everybody. I think some people on the call it came from Facebook. So be sure you uh, you add your email and your, uh, I think if there is enough uh, people, I, I might just do also add, to create a WhatsApp for the future. So be sure to to um, send your contact and I could send this uh, recording to everybody. This is amazing because I had a uh, recent in the last week, a uh, serious life transformation. And now I get you send me this um, this video and we're talking about it. 
and it seemed like it just happened for me and it was really major. I've never had any uh experienced anything like this and now it's like I feel a lot of stuff that's left behind, a lot of like negative energy and it's you're giving me a tool to try to like clear that up. Yeah. And yeah. The time is amazing. It's it's like the timing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Um I think some of you uh some of you have my 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 book here. Uh if you do have my book, I just want to show show you how you could apply the the principles book. Um let me um let me try to share that with you like um Give me a second here. I'm pulling that out. Okay, so I'll share, I'll show this to everybody too. Um, so some of you have it and then you can apply it using the book. Uh, um, using the book. I have two different books. One is called the Top Healing Principles. One is called the Top Healing Techniques. So let me show you this so that you can also use this to help help uh help you if you if you choose to um okay so you can um get the electronic version on my website or you can go to amazon and get this too uh so this is the top healing principles book uh so i'll show you the um the protocol here okay the protocol here is right is on page um 10 or 11 um so um, be behind all your thoughts, behind your beliefs, behind everything, there are fears, there are anger, there's sadness, there's grief, okay? So you could just use this checklist and see if you have weight issues, all right? If you have fear about your weight, maybe you have a fear that this weight is going to, I don't know, cause you physical issues or you can't maybe you can't do the things you want because of the because of the of of having weight. Notice how your body feels it. Chant the mantra so until you until it releases that energy. If if anger comes up, right? Maybe you're angry about the having weight or or whatever. Okay, chant it. Okay, if you have grief or if you if you have not, maybe you're not feeling safe. Okay, so by having more weight, not feeling safe. Maybe the reason why you put on weight was because you didn't feel safe. It's different for everybody. So chant that. Until you to let to let go of that, okay. So this is uh, this is the principle. This is the our protocol as a checklist of the repeated type of programs that we have. And then um, uh, let me show you the. Um, this is also it's called uh, these are the top um, principles or that if our body, our mind and body is resisting these principles, we have more suffering. Like accepting what is, you know, fear of be being vulnerable or being weak, fear of pain. Okay. So your physical, your chronic issues is likely connected to a lot of these different types of resistances, either consciously or unconsciously. So you'll, if you, if you chant to let go of these resistances, uh, letting go of resisting what is, letting go of the fear of being vulnerable or uh, issues you have about self-worth. Okay, if you chant to, to let go of these things, then your physical health also improves. Okay, so that's, what, uh, yeah, go ahead. What is the good person identity? Uh, the good person, go the like, good person. If we have attachments to being like a, like a good person, like if, let's say somebody accuses you of lying or cheating or, or something like that. It doesn't feel good, right? So that's an example of, you you become attached to thinking of yourself as such a good person, okay? But the idea is that you could do good, be a good person, but just don't become attached to it. If you become attached to it, you have suffering. Make sense? Okay. Makes sense. It may. He said, if you become attached to it, it makes you suffer. And one of the primary things in Buddhism is 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 about attachments, right? Attachments create suffering. So right. if you it's fine to be a good person. Nothing wrong with being a good person. It's the attachment of, 
of being a good person. If you put an image of yourself and constantly trying to prove to other people that you're a good person, then you have attachment, right? So that's right. So if you have attachment to being a good person, uh, then that's the problem. Okay. Just don't become attached to it. Just do good and don't think about it. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, I don't want to keep anybody waiting, but um, hey, if any of you want to uh, uh, want to make sure if I don't if I if I don't have your email, I can't send anything to you. So be sure you send either e um, I'll put your email in the chat box uh, or or email me, um, and then I can send it back to you. Uh, if anybody has something really serious or chronic, and you want us to to, to, to 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 support you, work with you, or have a talk about how to help you. Um, you know, contact us and we can um, give you some guidance. We'll be happy to to talk to you further on, on any of those areas. Um, hey, I hope this is helpful. If it's helpful, if everybody uh, enjoyed it, we'll do more of these. Yeah, sides. yeah it was very helpful. Okay. All yeah. right. Right on time. Thanks. Then um, I'll let everybody go and uh, have a good rest of dinner. And maybe somebody, some people are calling from other parts of the world. So thank you, thank you for joining. And uh, um, oh, but oh, one last thing is, any if anyone wants to join our group healing, that's next Saturday, next weekend on Saturday at nine a.m. Chicago. So if anybody wants to join that, there'll be another email sent to to you. Uh, that's ninety minute group healing. Okay. Thank have you. A good, <clears throat> have a good night, everybody. All right, you too. All right, bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>